Hey, what's going on, guys? I picked up a new rifle the other day for pretty cheap. Actually, I've been looking for one of these for quite a while. And this is the Type 99 Air Saka in 7.7 Jap. And it is one of the last ditch rifles. So, uh, I mean, traveling, every gun store I go in, you know, uh, if I'm on road trips, I'll go into any gun store, start looking around. And usually, the. Usually there's actually, you know, maybe one or two in in a lot of the stores that I go to. But they all want four, five, six hundred dollars for these things lately. And I know they were pretty cheap, uh, you know, ten years ago when everything else was. But uh, they have climbed. And there's actually one at Cabela's right now with a <laughs> with a cracked receiver. And they want four fifty for it. And... I don't know. I've been trying to beat him up on that. But we all know how Cabela's is. And uh, first off, this thing is a later last ditch. And it does have the, the chrysanthemum and the uh, the mum. It is uh, struck out. It's not ground out. Obviously, we're looking for ones with with no defaced mums. But those are getting pretty pricey now, nowadays. And I really I want shooters. But... You can still see the mum. And there's been a lot of debate between the ground out ones and the struck out ones. Uh, a lot of people say that this is uh, a field pickup that, you know, they deface before surrendering or, I mean, you know, Japanese never really surrendered much. And if they were taken alive, I mean, they're not going to have time to really strike this out. So I don't know how accurate that is. But most of them, you know, when they were handed in, they just have a grinding wheel and they just brrr, grind them off. Uh, or, the, you know, they hand grind them. But uh, I've never been able to get a, a real answer on the struck out one. So if anyone knows or lead me in the right direction, I'd appreciate it. And uh, this is obviously missing uh, the, the Japanese symbols on it. It's because uh, the later the war, you know, they needed to speed up production on these things. And they took, uh, you know, some shortcuts. So one of the shortcuts was getting rid of these these symbols and stampings. And also, you see, the front sight is different. It is more crude and elementary. So is the this nose cap right here. It's just a, a band steel. You know, crudely ground down and really makes... Uh, this handguard, yeah. the fit is not great. Also on this band, it's just a cheaper band. I wish I had a a normal 99 to, to kind of compare. It's got a gouge here. I mean, who knows what it's from. Could be fell on something. Could be a sword slash bayonet. Who knows? Not uh, can always dream on these rifles. Also, the rear sight is not adjustable. The front sight is actually adjustable. It has uh, a drift. It's dovetailed. So you can't adjust that. But this this is uh, screwed into the, the barrel. This whole block. So this is not adjustable. It's actually a decent peep sight, though. But if I can get it. No. Decent peep sights. Uh, they don't have, you know, the the aircraft wings or anything or the the full adjustable and uh these two notches right here are for the barrel just uh when they when they got lined up and head spaced they always marked them on the left side the one at cabela's has a crack right here on the right side it's small uh it's still tempting but it is there and this is a type or a, a nagoya arsenal they made uh, rifles from 1923 to 1945. Most of the arsenals were shut down, obviously, in 95 or 1945. Uh, one of the Tokyo arsenals, I can't remember the name, not Nagoya or um, Koyoto, I think shut down in 1935, but obviously not because of the war. So, Series 10, you can't even see this, but it's a Series 10 marking. And then this is for Nagoya. 
and uh, it still does have the groove here which would be uh, the dust cover that comes on a lot of the bolts but obviously another uh, you know cost saving and metal saving option for Japan, uh, Japan was to get rid of those and a lot of guys on the regular ones they would throw them out anyway because they would rattle and make noise so they would ditch them but also on the bolt this is uh, more crude the bolt handle usually you'd have a nicer uh, actually bigger kind of oval this is just crudely made and also on the back of the bolt right here this is just crude welded they would usually have another mom a, a big mom really well done and this is your, your safety you just push in and rotate so when it's on whole guns locked up you got no trigger so just uh, hit it with your your palm it'll unlock everything so it uh, it's definitely a shooter it is a Mauser action and everyone says that it is one of the strongest Mauser actions and the trigger on this thing it'll take up and it's pretty heavy but it's crisp uh, surprisingly Let's see, you can see yeah you can't even reset it but uh, a lot of the testing on these things when they were captured after I mean they were putting these things to almost a hundred percent over what the, the charger should be and they were not really blowing they were holding together so definitely uh not afraid to shoot this thing you know i shoot all my guns even low numbered 1903s you know if you really uh do the research on them the risk is minimal and mostly attributed to the ammo but this being a 77 jab the ammo on these things is Probably gonna pay twenty five to thirty five dollars for twenty. They're not. You're not gonna go pick these up at Walmart. Uh, also with the the six point eight uh, type thirty eight, you're you're not gonna really find them. You can make the the ammo out of thirty uh, six brass if you want to cut it down and and reshape it. But to break this bolt down, I'll just do that real quick. Up and out, and just like any other Mauser comes right out uh, I got this thing and it was decently it, I mean it had some rust spots on it but it cleaned up really nice I, I just got done cleaning it it is all numbers matching also there's numbers here here and then there's numbers on the back of the bolt you can actually just take this down uh, push down rotate it pops right out so you'll have numbers on this nose right there Kind of hard to do this on camera, <laughs> but if I don't look too stupid, there we go. All right, and it does have uh, the last round bolt hole open, so the bolt's not going to go forward, so you know you're out of ammo. Just push down the follower, and you're good to go. Uh, the one thing that I, I mean, mostly you're gonna find these things. I, I, you know, some rust in here. Also, this is a takedown here. Pops right open. You got a jam. You want to get rid of your ammo, and also just for servicing and cleaning. You know, this the, under the spring was rusty, and under some of the the stock that I could actually get to, which is one of the problems on these things. Uh, I knew that these screws were going to be buggered up and they are because they're staked and some people will drill these out uh, I mean I actually you can get this one out I got that one out and I actually got this one out because it wasn't staked as well but someone buggered the hell out of it before but this one uh, that was I, mean, I tried it a little bit but you know you see people roll the edges over on them and they're sharp so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might 
take it to my shop and extract it and get a new uh, a new screw or I might just leave it. The only problem is that I did see some rust under this stock. Just a, you know, not like crazy, but I want to get I want to get in there. And I want to oil it and I want to make sure it doesn't rust ever again. So that's the only annoying part. I mean, I had some some rust under here and you know, I killed everything. I mean, I went through this thing like crazy this morning for a couple hours, oiled everything and uh, just scrubbed the hell out of it. Treated the stock and you know, so I don't have to worry about it sitting in the safe for a while. Uh, speaking of the stock, the last thing is actually on these, they are, you know, the stocks are crude also. I mean, you can see or hear the milling on them and they also don't have uh, the, the grooves here. There's usually two grooves and also it would would be a metal butt stock, but on this it's actually wood, a wood stock. And people always say that they're cracked because uh, of this line right here, but these are actually just two piece stocks. It was cheaper for them to manufacture and quicker. So that's what they did. So they're not cracked. They're just, that's how they are. And uh, they're really, they're pretty smooth. Rifles, smooth actions. I shot one once a couple times a long time ago. But I don't know. I, I try to get, you know, a rifle from... You know, from each country in World War One and World War Two, it's just kind of how my collecting is, and this needed to be in the collection. So now I just got to look for uh, a normal Type 99, hopefully with the mum and the airplane sights. And I want the there's usually on the a monopod here, and hopefully I'll find that one soon. Uh, just just gotta keep looking. But that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, please. It helps out a lot, especially now YouTube is trying to run us out of here. But uh, just got to get to that thousand. Thanks.